Hello teacher, hello students, welcome to today's lesson on the method of development, radial line development of cone. In our last lesson, we have seen the principles of radial line development and the rules and steps used for the development of a right pyramid, a truncated pyramid and an oblique pyramid using radial line development. Let's briefly revise the previous lesson as usual. Radial line development is a pattern created by drawing the edges of an object radiating from a single point. It's made from figures such as cones and pyramids. In the development, all the elements of the figure become radial lines that have the vertex at their origin. A right pyramid is a pyramid for which the apex lies directly above the centroid of the base. To develop the lateral surface of a right pyramid, it's necessary to determine the true length of the edge and the true size of the base. With this information, the development can be constructed by lying out the phases in successive order with the common edges joined. In our today's lesson, we'll discuss the rules and steps used for the development of cone using radial line development. We particularly see how to develop the pattern of a right full cone, a truncated cone, and an oblique cone. Let's see. The surface development of cones is based on the radial line development method. The surface of a cone is developable because a thin sheet of flexible material can be wrapped smoothly about it. The two dimensions necessary to make the development of the surface are the slant height of the cone and the circumference of its base. For a right circular cone, the developed shape is a sector of a circle. The radius for this sector is the slant height of the cone, and the length around the perimeter of the sector is equal to the circumference of the bed. The proportion of the height to the base diameter determines the size of the sector, as shown on the screen. Well, students, next, we will see the steps used for making developments of a regular right circular cone. The development of a regular right circular cone is a sector of a circle. The development will have a radius equal to the slant height of the cone and an included angle at the center equal to the radius of the base divided by the slant height multiplied by 360 degrees as shown on the screen. In this equation, R is the radius of the base and S is the slant height. In order to develop the pattern of a right full cone, we should follow the following steps. Draw the front and top views of the full right cone. Divide the top view into a convenient number of equal divisions, in this case into 12. Number all division points on the top view and their corresponding points on the front view. Draw a large arc on the development using O as a center and true length H of the front view as a radius. Take a single cordial length of the top view to approximate the arc length with compass and step off along the large arc equal divisions as they have on the top view. Join the end point of the large arc to apex O to complete the lateral surface development. Well, students, let's do some activities to check how much you've understood the lesson. The views of a right full cone are given on the screen. Make the development of this cone correctly. Don't forget to use the steps you have already learned. Teacher, 
please assist your students on their needs while they are doing the activity. Welcome back. Did you complete the exercise? I'm sure you did. The solution to the activity is given on the screen. Compare your answer with it. Students, how are you doing so far? I hope you are doing great. Next, we'll discuss how to develop the pattern of truncated comb. 
Do you know what a truncated cone is? Let's see. A truncated cone is the result of cutting a cone by a plane inclined to the base and separating the part containing the apex. In order to develop the pattern of a truncated cone, we should follow the following steps. Draw the front and top views of the truncated cone. Also, draw the auxiliary view of the inclined surface, which is an ellipse. Divide the top view into any appropriate number of equal parts, say 12. Then, number them in the clockwise direction as shown on the screen. Project the surface line elements from the top view to the front view and number them. Project points from the edge view of the ellipse to the true length line to get the true length of all line elements. Draw the development of the full cone. Then, divide it into the same number of equal parts of the number of surface line elements taken in step 2 and mark points 1, 2, 3, etc. Transfer the true length of all elements from the front view to the development locating points A, B, C, etc. Draw a smooth curve and attach the base and the inclined surface or the ellipse to complete the development. Well students, here is a practical activity for you. The views of a truncated cone are given on the screen. Make the development of this cone correctly. Don't forget to apply the steps you have learned. Teacher, please assist your students on their needs while they are doing the activity.
Welcome back. Did you make the development of the object correctly? Wonderful. The solution to the activity is given on your screen. Compare your answer with it. Well, students, how are you doing so far? I hope you are enjoying the lesson. Next, we will look at the development of an oblique cone. Do you know what an oblique cone is? Let's have a look at it. An oblique cone is one with bases parallel to each other, but not aligned to each other. As a result, the lateral surface of the cone appears oblique. In order to develop the pattern of an oblique cone, we should follow the following steps. Draw the front and top views of the oblique cone. Number the surface line element starting from 1 at the shortest line element in the clockwise direction. Construct the true length diagram that shows the actual length of all line elements. To make the development Start by drawing line, then use O prime as center and O to two prime from the TL diagram as radius to draw an arc. Draw another arc with one prime as center and one up to two, approximating it from the top view as radius, intersecting the first arc at two prime. Again. Draw an arc with center at O and radius O to 3 prime from TL diagram. Then draw another arc with center at 2 prime and radius 2 up to 3 from top view to intersect the previous arc 3 prime. Repeat this process until all points 4 prime, 5 prime, 6 prime, etc. are located. Draw a smooth curve through points 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime, etc. using French curves. Also attach the base to complete the development. Well, let's strengthen your knowledge of developing the pattern of oblique cones by doing some activities. The views of an oblique cone are given on your screen. Make the development of this cone correctly. Don't forget to follow the steps you have learned. Teacher, please assist your students on their needs while they are doing the activity.
Welcome back. Did you complete the exercise? Excellent. The solution to the activity is given on the screen. Compare your answer with it. Well, students, I hope you have gained a lot of concepts from today's lesson. Before we come to the end of the program, let's summarize the main points. Radial line development is employed for pyramids and single curved surfaces like cones in which the apex is taken as center and slant edge or generator as radius of this development. The two dimensions necessary to make the development of a cone surface are the slant height of the cone and the circumference of its space. For a right circular cone, the developed shape is a sector of a circle. The radius for this sector is the slant height of the cone and the length around the perimeter of the sector is equal to the circumference of the bed. The proportion of the height to the base diameter determines the size of the sector as shown on the screen. Students, I want you to copy the exercise from your textbook and keep on practicing. Teacher, please assist your students on their needs while they are practicing after the lesson. Well, we have come to the end of the program. I hope you have enjoyed learning the lessons as much as I have enjoyed teaching it. In our next lesson, we will learn about the intersection between geometrical solids. Until then, thank you teacher and thank you students. Goodbye.